through the eyes of a traveler. Hello world, and welcome to part two, the final part. Part one was the ride up to Ratigali Lake, Ratigali Jeel, and I'm just showing you a short video for now of the tail end of the journey. And then after that, we'll go into what we did uh, at Ratigali. Um, so on arriving at Ratigali, I decided, I had decided before even arriving, that I wouldn't take my bike as far as the lake. The track is not fit for riding. It's literally less than a foot wide. And the option is to either hike or take a horse. Guess what I did? Well, I told you in part one, but here it goes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm a lazy so-and-so. A lazy bugger, if you wish. But I had to take the horse. An option to take a different type of steed was made available, and I couldn't say no. Uh, this horse is a mountain horse, so uh, it looks quite small. It actually looked like a pony. Uh, its name is Jugnu. Um, and Jugnu is, I think... When translated, it means firefly. I'm not sure why they'd name a horse firefly, but uh, Jugnu is his name and that's how he responded. The young fellow ahead um, would not let me take the horse myself. They like to guide the horse, but I understand why, because it's uh, a difficult terrain further along and often the horses don't want, want to move forward. So they have to uh, encourage the horse um, and that's how we get to the lake um, so for now I'll let you just enjoy and I'll come back to you when we get to the smaller lake Hello world, so the journey by motorbike has stopped, um, the trek to the lake, the small lake and the bigger lake, I took by horse, this horse is called Jugunu, and uh, he is taking me to the, the larger lake. This is the smaller lake. I'm trying to look at the footing that the horse is taking because it's a really narrow path. It's narrow for walking, so it's extremely narrow for the horse. But the horse is doing well. And this gentleman ahead is Murtaza. He is uh, a nice guy. We have a few things in common. I have four daughters. He has five. That's the view. That's the view of the lake. There is a waterfall over there. I'm trying to give you the best shot possible, but I'm also trying to keep my seat on the horse stable as the uh, reins are held by the, the chap ahead. So I'm sitting on this horse without any reins and grabbing onto the seat for dear life. That's the waterfall. Poor Jugnu, he's carrying my overweight carcass, um, so he should drink water, don't you think? <laughs> 
Thank you, Jugnu. You did well in carrying me. So Murtaza was telling me that often when people come to Rati Gali, we play a little trick with them. We show them the first lake and say, this is the lake, the infamous Rati Gali Jeel or Rati Gali Lake. And then when we take them further and show them the actual lake, the real McCoy, the pièce de résistance, this Rati Gali Lake, which is surrounded, encapsulated by mountains, snow-capped mountains, then the disappointment that they were hiding before lets loose and they see the ecstasy uh, that they feel when they see such magnificence. And I did enjoy the fact that they play jokes, but because I already knew there were two lakes when he told me this is the lake and I uh, explained to him that your trick, though it be good, it will not work on me. Um, so yes, we then uh, move forward to, to get close to the lake. I wanted to know more about Rati Gali and how uh, people like Murtaza, the guides and the people who work here, survive. He told me that they leave their villages for about three months and some work on a pass which is just above the mountains called Nuri Pass, but the most, uh, that most come and work here and they stay here for approximately three months whilst the snow allows them access and earn as much as they can through tourists because when they return it's back to farmland and farmland here is in the form of small parcels of land nothing too big and that's how they survive there is a beauty of untouched places that when you see them, you appreciate, but it's very hard to explain in words what that beauty and that feeling and that sensation is otherwise. So folks, I'm at Rati Gali Jeel. Now I've just spoken to the young chap whose horse I borrowed, shall we say. And I said, is this harder than a, a route called Nuri Top? Nuri, Nuri Top, I'm saying it with an accent, I don't know why. Nuri Top, I'll say it with an English accent. Uh, Nuri Top is a route which is beyond these mountains. And it's a longer route, but it's not as hard as this route. And so, um, without knowing it, I've actually done something which is the hardest route to do in all of Kashmir. And I've done all the hard routes in Pakistan, in uh, the northern areas of Pakistan, Pakhtunkhwa. So I know I've now done the hardest route of them all on bike. Now, for all of the you who ever wish to venture out here please do come to Pakistan please do come to Kashmir honestly the, the 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 respect they will offer a tourist especially a foreigner tourist a foreign tourist is way more than they offer locals it's just one of those things in Asia when you're a foreigner they see you as 
somebody that they can show respect to and it elevates their own self-respect so they offer you way more than they would offer somebody who's local or native or even is a foreigner but looks like them so all i'm saying is come out here and if ever you guys do venture this way whether you hire bikes and you come this way remember one thing this lake is one of the hardest lakes to get to by motorbike that is some are not even accessible by motorbike but if you do come don't come alone like i did i'm foolish foolhardy and i would say stupid because i did something that they said why did you do it on your own nobody does it on your own on their own but i did it on my own and i can tell you i fell four or five times and i fell with the idea that i had to fall otherwise the bike was rolling back with brakes applied with bike in gear it still rolled back and it was heading towards the river the ravine down below so i dropped the bike on purpose and that slowed the rollback process considerably and then i would raise the bike pick the bike up and there are ways of picking bikes up and i do use those but you know when it's like close to 200 kilograms and you've got to pick it up four or five times possibly even six it does tire you out by the way that's the chap who's horse i'm um, riding it tires you out and so when it tires you out you suffer from some mental and physical fatigue that you may not have experienced before so what i would say is if you do come by motorcycle great be brave do it but come in uh, a group but really what i would recommend is the jeep track the jeep track would be something that you would never forget anyway time to fly the drone so i'm signing off Sincere apologies from the bottom of my heart for the drone footage. Uh, my editing skills are very limited. I am but a biker and I've tried my best to give you the best bird's eye view I could possibly give you with the very limited uh, knowledge that I have of drones. Um, I hope you excuse my faults because they are many in number but um, I guess uh, poor drone footage is better than no drone footage. So that's what I'm sticking to. That's the argument I'm putting forward and I hope you forgive me. Thank you. To appreciate the beauty of Ratigali, you have to see it in all its splendor, in all its seasons. So to help, I've included a few pictures from different seasons. I hope you enjoy. It's a shame I came here half-cocked. If I had thought about this journey, and if I had known what I know now, I would have certainly uh, 
brought with me tents, or a tent at least, so I could camp out here because I've camped around the world, but to be honest, this would have been one of those epic nights that I would never have forgotten. Not that I'm saying I will forget the journey there or the journey back, but I think adding to something that's so wonderful would only have helped with my memory um, of this place. Then again, I'm sure I can do it again. Can I? We'll see. <laughs> My steed is parked there somewhere. Can you see it? The journey back was intense, uh, though there were a few inclines, it's mostly uh, on a descent, um, so speed was much faster and even though I've only done the track once on the way to the lake, a little knowledge of a track makes you deal with it a lot more better than no knowledge at all. And so on the way back I fell but once um, and uh, it was tiring but I think the, the lake did rejuvenate me a little and the problem that I did encounter uh, on the return leg which is something I didn't find on the uh, approach was that on applying brakes the rear brakes would force the rear wheel to literally jump off the ground and bounce up and down and applying the front brake would just cause me to brake hard and often uh, it felt as though I was about to come off the bike. Luckily uh, applying the rear and the front on a timely basis prevented that but I did fall the once. I wish I could show you that fall but at that time I had my camera off and it was a good thing to because not only did I uh, kiss dirt, I think I also ate a little bit too. There was a race against time because now knowing how long it took me to get to the bottom of the track that begins the journey to Ratigali Lake uh, and also knowing that there was a further three hour to two hour journey to 
get to the hotel where I had left some of my uh, personal belongings, I had to speed things up. I really had to push the bike to its limits, uh, though I think it was within its limits, but I definitely pushed myself past my limits as I know I was huffing and puffing all the way home. And that's not a good huff or puff either. <laughs> but the journey was wonderful and uh, I'm never gonna forget this trip. And maybe, and maybe, just maybe, I might uh, pluck the courage again, pluck up enough courage that is, to do this once more. I think I will. Anyway, before I go folks, Thank you for watching, thank you for your time and patience. I appreciate these uh, videos along. Um, and if you can do me a great favor, uh, could you please subscribe and click on the bell icon because your support is so, so needed. Take very good care of yourselves and to all the bikers out there, please ride safely. Remember, there are people at home waiting for your return. Don't disappoint. Take care everyone. Once again, farewell.